everyone, I'm Lindsay with Gardner Supply Company. Today we're talking grow lights and taking a look at all the different lighting concepts and terminology you may need to understand when picking out your grow light. Okay, first, LED versus fluorescent bulbs. What are the differences? Fluorescent bulbs have really been the go-to bulb for gardeners for a long time, and since they're still widely available and pretty affordable, they're really popular. Um, if you are brand new to gardening, or you just need your grow light for a few weeks each year to start your seedlings, a fluorescent bulb is a really great choice. Just be reminded that fluorescent bulbs do have a little mercury in them, so if they break and you need to throw it out, they can't go in your household trash. Make sure you contact your county or your town waste disposal program. LEDs, or light emitting diodes, can cost a little bit more upfront but they've got a number of benefits that make them well worth the extra cost. They last an incredibly long time, uh, sometimes five times longer than fluorescent bulbs, up to 50,000 hours in some cases. Uh, they're energy efficient, they use about half the amount of energy that fluorescent light bulbs do, uh, and they don't put out nearly as much heat as older types of bulbs, so therefore you don't risk burning any of your plants or drying out your soil. When it comes time to hanging your bulbs, you've got a number of different options. You can retrofit an existing shop light fixture if you'd like. You can purchase just an individual bulb. This is a fluorescent bulb. Make sure you choose a T5 or T8, depending on the shop light fixture that you have that you're trying to retrofit. If you'd like something a, a little bit flashier, you can purchase a, an all-in-one grow light station. Um, these have a number of benefits associated with them. They've got uh, trays that help collect the water so you don't risk any spills. A lot of our bottles are on wheels so you can move them around from room to room. And they're really attractive. You can set them up right in your home. Uh, you don't need to hide away your grow lights in your basement. Um, you can put them right out front with the rest of your furniture. Light intensity can be measured in a couple different ways, which is probably why you see lots of different numbers written on your light bulb package. Many of you have probably heard of lumens, but lumens just takes into account the intensity of a light that human can see. It doesn't really have to apply to the light coming out of your grow light bulb and the light that plants use. Light can be measured on a spectrum of electromagnetic waves, but plants actually use a small portion of that overall spectrum, an area called photosynthetically active radiation, or PAR. PAR can be measured in micromoles of photons. This bulb has it listed here in micromoles. Uh, and this is the amount of light that's actually hitting each leaf per meter squared per second. If you're looking for a really high intensity, powerful grow light, you can go ahead and compare this micromole value here. A good way to remember this is that lumens are for the human eye and micromoles of photons are for photosynthesizers. Color temperature is a way to measure light's appearance. It's measured in the units of Kelvin, with warmer hues having a low Kelvin value and cooler blue hues having a higher Kelvin value. Uh, as gardeners, why do we care about light temperature? Uh, the color temperature of your light can actually trigger different things happening in your plants. Blue lights can trigger vegetative growth and red lights can promote fruiting and flowering in, in your different plants. Um, lots of growers do opt for purchasing different types of lights to promote different things in their plants. However, for all around growing, your best bet is something that is labeled full spectrum. Full spectrum is generally between 5,000 and 6,500 Kelvin. It's gonna mimic natural sunlight and it's gonna give off kind of a clean, bright white hue. Wattage is a measure of the power consumption of your light bulb, so it really has less to do with uh, the light intensity or growing plants and more to do with the power that it's drawing from your power source and also your electric bill. Um, a really uh, highly efficient light bulb is going to put out a lot of light and be really intense for the amount of wattage that it pulls from your power source. Let's talk photo period. Photo period is the number of hours of light per 24 hour day each plant needs. We all know that plants need a ton of light for proper growth, but they also do need periods of uninterrupted darkness to promote things like fruiting and flowering. Changes in the photo period can actually trigger some plants that it's time to start producing flowers or fruit. You've probably heard of short day and long day plants. Short day plants uh, generally require long stretches of uninterrupted darkness. These are things like Christmas cactus or chrysanthemum or, or poinsettias, a lot of our fall and winter blooming plants. 
Long day plants are the inverse of that. They need long stretches of bright, consistent light. These are your summer garden veggies like lettuce and spinach, uh, flowers like sunflowers, coneflowers, snapdragons. Uh, they need long periods, at least 12 hours a day of uninterrupted light. Setting your grow light system up on a programmable timer is a really great convenient way to ensure that your grow lights are turning on and off at the correct time and giving your plants the correct amount of light. I hope this has shed a little bit of light on the grow light conundrum. Uh, please put any of your questions in the comment section below and check out gardeners.com. Happy growing!